Oh, hi guys and girls, Amy again. Welcome back to the spare room. I've got a project today and I've sort of got half finished, but I, I thought, well, probably needs a video. So here we go. I need to make some gears for a project, um, well, for a couple of projects, but there's a few things that we know and a few things we don't know and the drawings of course are imperial and my gear cutters are all metric so we need two gears and they need to be bigger ratio as we possibly can and they need to be 5 16th um, according to the, the imperial drawing uh, 15, 15 sixteenths of an inch centers. Now, if we convert that to metric, probably the easiest and quickest way, we get 24 millimeters. So let's work with 24 millimeters. Now, if we have a look at my gear cutters, and I've got a set of 0.8 module here, um, as you can see, you read that box, uh, module 0.8 number one to number eight at 20 degree pitch angle high speed steel cutters that'll be just the thing the smallest gear i can cut with these is 12 teeth so if we work on this one at 12 teeth and we put some details into any online gear generator what we're going to discover is that the other one to mesh up with this particular pitch or module, which is 0.8, which is 0.8, is 48 teeth. So we need a 48 and a 12. Now these I want to be, they really want to be, I think, they really want to be steel some sort and probably case hardened and these want to be brass now that these I reckon we could make out of three millimeter brass or one eight or whatever we can find now this one needs to be a little bit wider because in one instance anyway, is riveted into the centre. So let's make this four millimetres. So these really need to be eight millimetres long. The best way to do these, we need a few of them, so I'm just gonna make a sandwich on an arbor, even on a bolt or something like that. Screw them all together nice and cut them all at once. So 48 teeth, we can do all them in one operation. These we're going to do in a bit longer, um, we're a bit limited for space, uh, for cutting these pinions um, in the middle of the machine. Don't have a lot of room between the centre and the dividing head, which is a, the way that the middle of the machine is set up really. So I'm going to make three or four pieces and there's one I've done already. So. It's a 12 tooth gear. We're going to cut a few of them. That's just 12 or 14 and we might case harden them. So, how do we work out the outside diameters? That's the next thing. This one's 12 teeth. That's easy. So, I think it's... We've got 12 teeth, right, and we need to add two for module gears, so why do we add two? It's just the way it works out. We end up with 14. 14 times 0 0.8 is 11.2. So as easy as that, that's the outside diameter for this one. So this one's the same. Um, we've got 48. Plus 
plus 2 is 50. 50 times 0.8 is 40 millimeters. So we need to cut some blanks at 40 and some blanks at 11.2. So here we go, 11.2 Put a bit of undercut in there, it's probably not enough, but it'll give us a bit more clearance in the centre on the, on the dividing head with the cutter. So I made up a bit of a mandrel, I drilled these 7mm because they seem to be about the right size, and made these all fit. Found a washer and a nut. Now we can machine these down to 40 millimeters. Got to fix this stupid camera gantry because if the 3D printers the prints are letting go and we've got this bit of wobble, I'm sorry about that. But um, at some point in the near future, we'll get that fixed. So we've got the 40 mil blanks here, six of them. They should be pretty easy to cut. And we've got another blank here for this one. So that's gonna do us for a bit. It's probably gonna need another one of these, but at this point, we're not gonna bother. Next job is to come over to the mill set up the dividing head and work out how deep they've got to be cut. So depth of cut, um, we're 0.8 module. So depth of cut is two times that, is 1.6 millimetres, plus a bit of clearance so that when you set them on the right centres, they, they don't they don't bind up when they're not tight. So that's usually 0.167 times M, no times your module, which works out to be approximately 0.13 millimetres. Now 1.6 by 1.6 is 1.73 millimetres is total depth of cut. Pretty simple, not much to it. So let's work out which dividing plate we need. The best way to do that is to get your black book and open it to where it says gears and on a couple of pages. It's got an indexing chart for 40 to 1 and 60 to 1, uh, 40 to 1 and 90 to 1. I'm not sure it's got a 60 to 1 one, but anyway. Um, 40 to 1. We need 12 holes. We can do that on the 39 hole centre or a circle or the 27 hole centre. We need 3 and 9 27 or 3 and a third, which means every 3 setups it's going to come back to zero on the plate it's a good way to check that um, so we need the 27 holes the three three complete turns and nine 27 holes so it's it's the hole that is included plus nine holes that'll give us 12 for 40 which is further down here Oh, it's right at the bottom. Forty's not right. We said forty-eight. For forty-eight, we need the eighteen hole, and it's fifteen eighteenths. So sixteen holes on that on the eighteen. 
whole circle. That should give us 48. So almost a complete turn. So that's where we need to be. Let's set the dividing aid up and the camera over there and, and let's see what we can do. So I think we're set up here anyway. I know we're set up here. This cutter is the right cutter for the 12 to 14 teeth wheel, which is a number one cutter. It's as small as we could go with this set. And it's on centre. Um, it's on zero on the top of the shaft here. Our DRO is back on zero. And everything's ready to cut. We've got the 27 tooth. And look, we've got the 27 tooth wheel on here. That's set on zero. Now this is nine holes or one third of a circle. So you've got the first space is one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes, five holes, six holes, seven holes, eight holes, nine holes. So there's nine spaces, there's ten holes. We select a speed, which uh, we run in about on that there, I think we're probably doing about 60, 70 RPM. And we'll take two cuts. So let's take the first cut at 1.2. Let's set up at 1.2. And That's the first cut. Now on our dividing wheel we want to go one, two, three, and the difference, which is the other sector here. So that's three and nine holes or nine spaces. can't go as far here against the jaw so we've made this as long as we possibly can and get enough pieces out of it so from here we turn the sector around and then we go one two three and we're set let's let's put the next one in Move the sector again, and we go one, two, three, and there's a check, we're back here to zero again on the third one, so we've gone a third of the plate. Chuck, touch the chuck either. Back there. Same again. One, two, three. And that hole. So that's basically what it is. They should meet up at the other end. And then I'm going to run another cut through at 1.73. And we'll come back and we'll have a bit of a look at what we got. So this is the last pass. It's really pretty helpful here to put a mark on the chuck and then you know 
when you're back where you started, especially if you're only taking a little cut. This is just a finished cut because the wire feed on the table crept a little bit um, under load. So this is just to bring it back up to to exactly seven, 1.73. And there we go. And we've got a pretty reasonable pin in there. I think everything looks pretty good. Haven't missed any teeth or anything. It all seems to be about the same. Same distance and thickness and angle and everything. And there's certainly enough there to get two 10 mil pinions out of, I think. So there we go. Next job is to set this one up. First job is to shorten the, the arbor a bit because I think we're going to run out of space there. And we're not going to move the Z axis at all because we're still on centre. We need to bring this down here until this just touches but first we need to find the right cutter because these are different shaped for the different relationship of the cutter of the different relationship of the teeth on different diameter wheels we need to find the right one so we'll put this one away nicely and this cutter here it's number six if we have a look it's telling us it's M module 8 20 degree pressure angle Number six, 35 to 54 teeth. So that's the right one. We'll put that one on. Make sure everything is nice and clean so we don't have any calamities with the... with the spacing. And that should be the right cutter for this. The next thing will be to find the height. So this is the last cut and in the end I got sick of cranking and disengaged the half nuts and engaged the rapid traverse. So if we go around here to this one, this should line up and it's probably not far out. So next job is to bring this table up a bit 1.73 like so and that'll be full depth So, basically it's just a matter of going right round. Now I'm going to cut the rest of these and then I'll come back and um, might go and check the leg of lamb in the pot and or in the slow cooker and have a drink because it's really, really, really muggy here because there's so much moisture in the air and everything's wet. We've had 328 millimetres or something of rain this last weekend, so everything's pretty wet. But um, I'm going to go around and cut all these and take them over the bench and we'll have a bit of a look. Well, there we go. Bit of a confession to make. I made a stack of these and I've mucked them up. Uh, trap for for young players I guess uh, these gears are probably alright for most things and really there's not a lot wrong with them except one tooth and it's a 
pretty hard to spot. I didn't move the quadrant when I moved the lever. So I picked it up again and fixed it, but one of, one of these teeth, I'm just looking, there it is there. Once you see it, you'll see it. One of these teeth here on each one, because they're all stacked together, is a little bit narrower than the others. They still work fine. It's just that if we put that one there together with the, the narrow one there, we've got a gap between. So not a big deal. They work fine that way. They miss a tooth that way. So not up to QC. So I sacrificed two of them to fill out the mandrel and I've cut. And I've cut four more. Had to put that in the vise under that nut. That was quite tight. So. These four should be just about perfect this time around. These two, you can see they've sort of had the, they've been chopped up a bit. So we've got two discs of brass for something else, I guess. And we've got four, four gears. So why did I make that mistake? Because I was filming video basically. Um, lost concentration. So these want a bit of a clean up, but just looking at this, they're not bad gears. So that's how you do it. There's a couple of things to remind yourself of. Don't do it when you've got other things on your mind, because you will make a, a very simple mistake, especially on a, on a gear with a lot of teeth. There's a lot of operations in these. And... I've got these right now, but it's some fairly expensive brass that I had to chop up to get them. You know, that's a pretty decent bit of three mil brass sheet that I really didn't want to have to use on this project. I'll get these flat. And I'm not going to say too much about what they're for or anything yet. There's too many other projects here to finish before I start another one. And I'll be posting these off to someone. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And more soon, be kind to each other.